Good morning, friends. Anne here. Got my cup of coffee. Got the word of God. And today's reading is from Malachi chapter one. We have done this series where we have been reading through the books of the minor prophets and we are on our way to Jesus in Advent. It's coming soon, I promise. But let's get through the book of Malachi. Today in chapter one, we're picking up at a time where it is a hundred years post exile of the people in Babylon. They have come back, they have rebuilt the temple. It's not as great as the temple that they had before, but their behaviors and their attitudes and the way that they were acting before exile came back. And they were the same people, they hadn't changed. God sent them into exile with the hope that they would change their hearts and their behaviors, that they would be drawn back to him. But he is seeing that the same things are happening in their lives as were happening before the exile. And so the prophet Malachi comes and God through Malachi begins to address some of the th these things that he is seeing in the people. And in chapter one, we hear kind of a back and forth between the people and God. God is making an accusation against the people and then the people are responding with a question, well, prove it to me. And then God gives them the answer. So there are two questions, two things that I want us to take a look at. The first one is in chapter one, verse two, and here is Jesus's first statement. He says this, I have always loved you, says the Lord. And the people say, but you retort, really? How have you loved us? And God goes through this explanation of how he had chosen Jacob over Esau. Now remember from our previous studies, whenever we're talking about Jacob and Esau in the books of the Minor Prophets, we're not talking about people, we are talking about nations. And he goes on to say, I chose you, Israel, this nation that was founded from Jacob's lineage, I chose you. And even though your circumstances are not perfect, even though your life is not comfortable, even though things are difficult, I still love you. I still choose you. And then he goes on to say in, uh, at the end of verse six, he says, you have shown contempt for my name. So here's an accusation. And then the people say, but you ask, how have we ever shown contempt for your name? And God answers, you have shown contempt by offering defiled sacrifices on my altar. What he goes on to say is that there is this pattern of the people coming to offer sacrifices to God, but their hearts are not really in it. They are offering sacrifices of their defiled animals, their, uh, their impaired animals, the worst animals that they possibly could offer, the ones that mean the least. And they're bringing these things to sacrifice to God and asking him to bless them. And God's like, you're showing contempt. You're making a mockery of the respect and the honor that you should have. You should always give your best, not just give the rest. Friends, the thing that stands out to me in these two questions that the nation is asking and these two statements that God is giving, that he has loved them even though they don't feel loved. He has chosen them even though they forget that they have been chosen. He is demanding and asking respect of them and they are not giving that, is that God has chosen and loves you. And he has chosen and he loves me. But we have the opportunity to reciprocate that love. So my question today is for you. Have you chosen God? Do you love God? Because the nation of Israel thought that God had not chosen them or loved them because they were not choosing or loving him. It's a two-way street. There is a decision to be made. There is a sacrifice on our part when we choose to love and serve God. So friends, remember today, God has chosen and loves you. Have you chosen and do you love God? Have a good day.